Hello, welcome to another segment of We Would See Jesus. Today, we're going to examine the question, is there anything God cannot do? Now, I've heard many Christians say, there's nothing that God can't do. Is this really true? Is there anything that God cannot do? And the short answer is yes. The long answer, well, today we're going to examine 10 things that God cannot do. First thing, before the mountains were brought forth or ever you had formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. So the first thing God cannot do is God cannot die. In fact, God is the only true immortal. Now, he can gift immortality to others. You know, the Bible says that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. So he can gift immortality to others, but he is the only true immortal. And you say, well, didn't God die on the cross? I've heard that before, too. No, God didn't die. The man Christ Jesus died on the cross, although God himself experienced what it would be like to die. He didn't die. The man Christ Jesus died, and Christ's spirit went back to the Father, who then resurrected Christ on the third day. So, next, so God has given both his promise and his oath. These two things are unchangeable because it is impossible for God to lie. Therefore, we who have fled to him for refuge can have great confidence as we hold to the hope that lies before us. So the second thing God can't do is God cannot lie, which means that God is reliable. We can rely on his word because his word is true. Next, God speaking, I won't break my agreement or go back on my word. So the next thing is God cannot break a promise. His word is true. His promises cannot be broken. And again, God is reliable. His promises can be relied upon. Next, if we are unfaithful, God remains faithful because he cannot be untrue to himself. So the next thing is God cannot be unfaithful. And again, God is reliable. He will never leave us. He'll never forsake us. He will be with us to the end of the age. He will never ditch us. Next. When tempted, no one should say, God is tempting me. For God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he tempt anyone. So God cannot tempt us and he cannot be tempted with evil. You see, we have three enemies. One is within, and that's our flesh, the weakness of our flesh. One is around us, that's the world and societal pressures. And one is in the spirit world, that would be the devil and his demonic forces. If we go through tough times, one or more of these three things will be responsible for those tough times, those trials and those temptations. God doesn't tempt us. God is there to strengthen and to make us victorious. Next, it is impossible to please God without faith. Anyone who wants to come to God must believe that God exists and that he rewards those who sincerely seek him. So the next thing that it's impossible for God, it's impossible for him to be pleased with men and women if they don't have faith. It's impossible. And I truly believe that this is the whole reason that we are on this earth. This is the whole purpose behind human existence. God wants a people who believe in him. God wants a people who love him even though they have never met him face to face. That's what God, that's what this human existence is about, is that God wants a people who have faith and believe. Next, <clears throat> I, the Lord, do not change. 
the next thing that's impossible for God to do is to change. God is the same yesterday, today, forever. He loves righteousness today just as he always has. He hates evil today just as he always has and always will. He will always love righteousness and he will always hate evil. He cannot change. Next. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. His understanding is beyond searching out. So the next thing is God. It is impossible for him to grow tired. And you might say, well, during the creation, didn't he rest the seventh day? Wouldn't that mean that he was tired? No, God rested, not because he was tired, but rather because the earth was complete. Everything about the earth was created in those six days, with the exception of the earth itself. The earth itself is billions of years old, but everything that he placed on it, the, um, the sun, and the moon, the stars, the uh, oceans, the lakes, the rivers, the mountains, the streams, you know, he created that act of creation didn't wear him out. And by doing, by resting on the seventh day also, God sets an example for us because he wants us also to cease from our labors on the seventh day, which is today, Saturday. So God wants us to cease from our labors and have a day of rest. Next. God didn't spare angels who sinned. He threw them into hell, where he has secured them with chains of darkness and is holding them for judgment. God didn't spare the ancient world either. He brought the flood on the world of the ungodly, but he protected Noah and seven other people. Noah was his messenger who told people about the kind of life that, God's, that has God's approval. God condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah and destroyed them by burning them to ashes. He made those cities an example to ungodly people of what is going to happen to them if they don't turn from their sins. So the next thing is that what God cannot do, he cannot allow evil people to live forever. He can't allow that because he knows that evil is like cancer and it infects the good cells. Cancer infects the good cells. The good cells don't infect cancer. Cancer infects the good cells. And that's why in 2 Corinthians 6, 14, I think, it instructs us not to be bound together with unbelievers. And tune in next week, because I do want to talk more about that, being bound together with unbelievers. Um, and then next, I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love, which Christ Jesus, our Lord, shows us. We can't be separated by death or life, by angels or rulers, by anything in the present or anything in the future, by forces or powers in the world above or in the world below, or by anything else in creation. So the final, number 10, it is impossible for God to stop loving the righteous. It is impossible. There is only one single thing that can separate you from the, God's love, and that's you. There's only one single thing that can separate me from God's love, and that's me. So understand this, that God loves, his love is from everlasting to everlasting. He loves us more than we can even imagine. So that's what I have for you today. God bless you all, and we'll see you next week.